Winnicott himself, until the 60s, hardly acknowledges his sources apart from Klein, and of course Klein he took his distance from. And then at the end of the 60s, uh, when he starts looking and kind of summarising for others the influences in his life, he also prefaces it with saying, gosh, I didn't mention them. I, I looked around to see, and it's only now I'm realising what I stole from other people. That the figure in the background is Ferenczi. And that Ferenczi, we might, Winnicott's part, although he never wanted to be part of a group, didn't believe in the groups, um, nonetheless, the sort of move towards an independence in thinking psychoanalytically and many of the things that Winnicott goes on to develop in such detail are actually lurking around quite prominently in Ferenczi. And apart from, from, from Ferenczi, I'd say that in uh, the, the kind of large figures of psychoanalysis, Freud is a very big influence on Winnicott and so was Melanie Klein. In a kind of more local and collegiate way, I think actually his relationship and intellectual exchange and interest in the same kinds of areas is very clear with Marion Milner. I want to stress the sort of collective enterprise of some of the things that Winnicott was involved in, which doesn't mean that he may not have been a leader uh, and you know a very prominent advanced thinker in relation to theories about that, but that there's a collective general interest in a group of analysts that Winnicott then becomes a leading light in.